So I was looking at this game called Mainframe Defenders and I noticed that the UI animations they're using is really, really, really nice. I bet when you're playing, you barely even notice it, but I want you to take the time to really look at it. Look how sweet it is, how really satisfying it looks. And if you think about it, most games, like 99% of games, use some kind of animations on their buttons, UI and transitions. And often it's more complicated than just animating the alpha or the uh, position of the menu itself. Look at some games like Enter the Gungeon when you're grabbing some new item and it pops up in the codex of guns. Look at the complexity of the animation. Maybe the book opening itself is just a simple animation, but you know, you have to display dynamic text along with all of this and it's pretty crazy. Another really well made one is Super Meat Boy. Look at all the different transitions you have, like swipes and blow up and scale and movement and the buttons popping in and out when you select them. All of these had to be manually animated somehow, you know, with some program and uh, that's a lot of work. And one that should be really simple, but if you take a look at Paper Please, um, you'll notice that, yes, I mean, the UI is kind of integrated in the gameplay, but look at, for example, the dialogues when someone is talking to you. You'll see that they don't just pop into existence. There's like a sliding effect, and depending on which side is talking, it goes from the right or the left. And honestly, that's a little bit harder to do than it seems. Now... For my game Solar Rogue, I did try to animate the menus and do some transitions and stuff, but uh, from the playtest things I've done, most people either never noticed it, and the few who didn't notice it tried to report it as a bug because they thought it was some kind of glitch in the graphics. And though my idea was to have some kind of glitchy effect, like you're changing channel on an old CRT monitor or something, um, if people think it's an actual bug, then that's a really big failure. This inertial animation of my UIs was done only by playing with the parent container for the whole menu and using properties that affects everything under it. So like the position, the scale, or the color modulation in Godot that you can use. And well, that's kind of limiting. I think there's not much cool effect you can do with that. And you certainly cannot do something like the mainframe defenders UI transitions. And even the little sliding effect I mentioned in Paper Please, I'm really not sure how you would do that. If you have any ideas of how I could implement something like that without really complicated stuff on a single interface menu, I would really like for you to post this video and write a comment below on how I could do that in Godot or actually any other game engine, because I'm very curious of the best way of doing this. My personal solution is actually pretty complicated. It involves a lot of shaders and complex post-processing. And honestly, it has all the bad smells. It's heavy, it's complex, it's hackish, and I'm actually kind of surprised it works. But it has the advantage that I'm pretty sure I can do any transition I want very easily now. I really waited a long time to tackle this little problem because I was kind of stuck in a loop. I couldn't prototype because I didn't know what I wanted and I couldn't decide what I wanted because I couldn't prototype it. But eventually I got this idea that I should just take screenshot of my game UI and then put them in Krita and try to apply a bunch of effects. Because Krita is a image editing software and it comes loaded with a lot, a lot, a lot of effects. So I just created a bunch of different layers and I just started applying random effects on my screenshot to see what I kind of liked. Of course, it's not animated, but it still gave me a pretty good idea of the kind of effect I wanted to apply in game. And once I had this figured out, well, I was pretty sure I needed the power of shaders. Now, there's a bunch of different ways you can apply shaders in Goda. One of the ways you can do it is just replace all the material on your control nodes and set whatever parameters in the shaders you want. My problem with this approach is that if I do this, it's really hard to synchronize the animation of each of the UI element in the window. So if I want some kind of transition that swipes across the screen, 
Well, how do I do this when the shader is applied individually to each element of my UI? Not only that, but if I'm controlling the animation to uniform in my shaders, well, you have to know that uniforms are global to one shader. So if all the nodes have the same shader, they all have to have the same parameters at the same time. Or I can duplicate the shader and have a unique instance of the shader for each of my UI element, but that means then that I need some kind of GDescript that's going to synchronize everything and animate every single node in my UI one at a time. And that sounds pretty crazy when I say it. So I didn't want to apply a shader on each of my UI elements separately. So the only solution that's left is to apply it globally to everything. But how do you do that? Well, the only way I could think of is with a post-process effect. Doing post-process in Godot is actually pretty straightforward. You just need a viewport container and then you attach a viewport to it. And all the children of the viewport are going to be rendered inside a texture. So in my case, I put all my menus inside the viewport and it was rendered all in one texture. And then the viewport container is going to take this texture and render it on the screen, just like a normal sprite. And you can attach any kind of material you want, which means you can put any kind of shaders you want on the viewport container to render it the way you want and apply any kind of post effect to the texture. The problem I had was when I started wanting to affect only certain menus and not the whole screen at once. And this took me quite a while to figure out in Godot. My first thought was to put a kind of clipping mask inside my effect as a uniform parameter. My script set the clipping mask to the size of the window I want to render and then the effect in the shader is applied only to the things inside this clipping mask. That worked really well, but if I have multiple windows on top of each other, it starts looking a little bit strange. So I thought, okay, maybe I need to move the menu I want to render into my viewport and only the menu I want the effect to be applied on will be a child of the viewport so that only it has the effect applied to it. But that created a very interesting problem because moving nodes around in Godot means that anytime I do a get node with the path, then this is going to be broken while the animation is playing, which means that initializing my menu while the menu is being animated just breaks everything. So my next idea was like, okay, maybe I initialize the menu and then I duplicate this menu and I animate that duplicated menu and this this duplicated menu doesn't need to have any UI element interacting with each other or something. So it doesn't need any code running. It just needs to look like the real menu. And that created another issue because using the method duplicate to copy a bunch of nodes means that all these nodes will revert to their default values. So my lists will be empty, the translation will not be applied and, and so on. So that didn't really work either, though it was very promising because it looked fine, except that, you know, the menu didn't have the button labels and stuff that I wanted them to have. At that point, I was a little bit getting desperate because I really couldn't figure out a way to do it properly. So I thought maybe I can try the opposite. Instead of moving the node of the menu, I'm going to move my viewport to where the menu I want to render is. It's not too complicated to do that because I know the node I want to animate. So I just do a get parent on that node and then I add the viewport as a child and then I add the node I want to animate as a child of the viewport, keeping kind of the same structure but putting the viewport in between. And when I'm finished, well, I know that the parent of the viewport is the old parent of the node I'm animating. So I just take the node I'm animating and reparent it to the parent of the viewport and remove the viewport from the whole equation and things should work, right? It did still break some of the get node I was using, but I figured that if I get the reference and keep it as a variable instead of just the path, then I don't have this issue when I'm reparenting. And let's be honest, this is probably a good idea anyway. You want to avoid having to do get node all the time. If you can keep a reference to your node, it's probably a better coding practice. Another issue was that when you reparent the menu using add child, it's always going to be added at the end of the list of children which means that it's going to change the render order, which means that some of my menus started popping under other menus. 
But the easy solution I found to that was to have some kind of dummy control that will keep the order and will have only a single child which will be the menu that I reparent to the dummy control all the time. This way I'm sure I keep the order of rendering always the same. Now there's probably better ways of doing that but that was an easy way and I went with it. Now there's one thing that really worries me is that I'm changing the parenting of the viewport but I keep the viewport container always at the same place. Which means that the viewport is no longer a child of the viewport container. Now it seems like this is not breaking anything but I'm actually kind of surprised with that. It seems like the viewport container still keeps a reference to the viewport and knows where to go get the texture of the viewport to render it properly even when the viewport itself is no more a child of the viewport container. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this breaks in the future, but for now it's working, and the reason I'm not moving the viewport container along with the viewport is because I have an animation player that's responsible for animating the viewport container shaders parameter, and if I move the viewport container, then the animation player does lose the reference to the viewport container. So I figured it's working right now, so I'm just not gonna touch that anymore. I still feel like there should be a much easier way of doing what I'm doing, but I just can't figure out how to do it. And the reason it annoys me is that this is actually really risky, like playing around with the node structures and the tree. I mean, it's very easy for something to break if I decide to interrupt the animation at any point and everything just breaks. But on the plus side, now I have a very powerful generic system to animate pretty much any UI element any way I want. I can create as many animations I want and as long as I add shader parameters to my shader on the viewport container, I can basically do anything I want. I, you want a crossfade X shape X-wing shape um, transition, I can do it. You want like some kind of crazy post effect blur shader or whatever on the menus, I can do it. So that's really cool, but at the same time, it seems a little bit hackish to me. But I don't know, I mean, if it's working, right? I'm always saying that, but it's true. If it's working, then, you know, that's fine, I guess. But because of these little worries I have, I'm not sure I would actually recommend you guys do any of the things I'm just showing you right now. But if you do, do leave a comment and let me know how it went for your project. And if you have any suggestions on how I could improve that, then also leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. And that's gonna be it for this week. See you guys in my next video. Bye.